All right, ladies and gentlemen, what is going on? My name is Husky or Hayden here, and in today's video, I'm going to be bringing you guys a Photoshop tutorial on how to create a simplistic yet professional looking Twitter header. But before the video starts, I must say that the audio when I exported this video got corrupted. So due to the end result of this tutorial being really, really nice, I am going to just voice over the tutorial itself and hopefully be able to explain in further detail than I did in the original audio recording what I'm doing and why I'm doing it. Because after all, this is a tutorial and I'm here to help teach you guys how to make stuff like this and if you want to do it side by side with the video you are absolutely welcome to do that so I'll see you guys in the video Alright ladies and gentlemen, now that we have Photoshop loaded up, the first thing we're going to want to do is go to this Create New tab, and we're going to create a new canvas that is 1500 by 500 pixels. This is the default header size that Twitter allows. You were allowed to copy my settings there. That is just the default settings that I use from Photoshop to make a Twitter header. So the first thing that you're going to want to do is pull in a background. You can use absolutely any background for this as long as there is like a character in the background or it has something going on. Like I don't think... If you just pulled in like mountains it would look that good but so for this one I chose a Fortnite background where there was a lot happening so in this picture that I chose right here there is quite a bit happening so that's the reason I chose this one alrighty so now that we have the picture in Photoshop what we're going to want to do is hold shift alt and grab any corner and drag it until we get it to the size bigger than the canvas since this is a 4k photo I can do that and get away with it, but if you have one that's a uh, standard HD resolution, you can probably get away with it as well. So all I'm going to do is center it on a spot that I think looks good where a lot is happening. So I chose to center it on this spot with the Dark Voyager. So the next thing that we're going to want to do is click down here at that little circle and grab a gradient map. So the default gradient that it gives us is really, really ugly, so of course we're going to make our own. So I'm going to click down here at this color and put in the color code 202233. And the reason I chose to put this color in is it's one of the best colors that I find as a default for the gradient. And then I can pick any color on top of it as long as it's not a really bright overpowering color. And it can look really good and it brings out a lot in this photo. Like for example I chose that purple there with it and it brought out a lot of good aspects within the photo. Right, so the next thing that you're going to want to do is create a new layer and grab the paintbrush tool as you can see I have right here. And you're going to want to just select the color white and then click around on random spots. I made a sun at the top, then clicked once in each corner and then in just a couple of random spots. And then once you do this you lower the opacity of it down so it can bring out the whites and kind of give it this sun radial effect at the top. So it brings out more color within the photo. Now we're going to change the color to black and we're going to make a new layer. And with this layer all we're going to do is keep the paintbrush tool selected and then go around the bottom of it in this radial shape and the reason I'm doing this is to um, bring out the top and bring out the colors that are in the top so it kind of just dulls the bottom out and then uh, we'll be using the blur tool later on this photo so you can really see what it does to the picture so now we're going to create another new layer and I'm going to add my logo in you can add your text or your logo in but of course my logo is done with the have heart one font and the have heart swash font so I'm gonna type in HSKIIE because I am husky that is my name and then I'm going to center it on the canvas and then later I'm going to center the photo on the letters but I want to make sure that I get the logo and everything in the center first and you don't want to make it too big like that you don't want to really make it overpower you want to make it decent sized and then for my logo, the little twist I like to add on to it is I tilt it just a little bit and then I make a new layer and then I add the swash on there. So for the swash, if you do have the have heart font, all I do is hit the key A and it creates a swash for me and then I make it the size of the, of course, the, um, the word that's above it and then I rotate it just a little bit so it would look like as if I had just signed it and, you know, made a little swash under my name because I think it looks really nice for the logo that I have. So the next thing we're going to want to do is select one of the text layers that I have, or in your case your logo, then you're going to click blending options and then click a drop shadow. So um, for the drop shadow that I am using, I put the distance up just a tad bit, but I kept the opacity on 100% because I really wanted it to have this kind of like popping effect. I really wanted it to be 
really wanted it to stand out and because that is going to be the main focal point of the header itself is obviously my name so people know who I am and then I did the same with the swash that was under it and now I'm going to open up a graphics pack here in just a second after I get all the blending effects done I'm going to choose to make the picture centered on my name now so once I have the picture centered on my name, and I think that looks really nice, we're going to open up this graphics pack up here from one of my favorite graphic designers. His name is Crafix. You guys should check him out on YouTube. He makes some really good tutorials and really good content. Right, now that we have this loaded up, I'm going to pull out a personal CC that he likes to use. It is one of my favorite color corrections for anything because it brings out the lights and the darks that are in the photo like a color correction should but it does it in a really nice way so it doesn't overpower when it brings it out so the next thing I'm gonna do in his um, graphics pack obviously is pull out the social media logos and I'm going to pull out a new YouTube logo so I'm going to hit hold control click on the thumbnail of the layer I'm going to make sure I have the move tool selected and I'm going to drag it into my picture right here now I think the logo is a little bit too big the way it is so I'm going to size that down in just a second, but I'm first I'm going to line it up with my text logo in a way that I think it's about a third of the way through the, or a fourth, my, my apologies, about a fourth of the way through the header itself. I'm going to make it a little smaller, and then I'm going to go back to blending options and add a new drop shadow onto it. Now I'm going to lower the opacity, size, and the distance of this one from the text because I don't feel as though it needs as much effect as the text needed because the text is the focal point of the header itself. So now I'm also going to go and pull out this Instagram logo, just a random logo that's left on there. It seems reasonable to pull out. So I'm going to center it up with the other logo and with the text itself, just like that. And then it tells me that that's even Photoshop does, but I do not believe that. So, because if you just blatantly look at it after I add this drop shadow, if you blatantly look at it, it is not in the same point that the YouTube logo is to the text. So I keep etching it left until I feel like as though I'm getting it close, and once I feel like I've gotten it in roughly the same area as the YouTube logo is, then I'm then I'm done with that. I think that looks really nice. So now next thing I'm going to do is click on the photo and make sure that you have this layer rasterized. Then you're going to click on this water drop on the left hand side toolbar and that's the blur tool. And I'm going to blur out the sides of it and the top and bottom of it so that only the focus is in the middle of the picture where all the action's happening. So after I add the blur tool, I'm going to put a border on it. So I'm going to go up here to the uh, rectangle tool, make sure there's no fill with a black stroke on about 16 pixels in my case. Then I select the move tool and size it up to be equal with the uh, rectangle for the header that we have. And once we do this, we're going to make sure we put it on top of all of the color corrections we have on it. And then we're going to lower the opacity of it. So we're going to take the opacity down to about 15% as it adds a nice but not subtle border onto it. And that is going to be it for the tutorial ladies and gentlemen. I really hope that you guys enjoyed this video. I am sorry that the audio got corrupted when I attempted to export it. So I hope I did a decent job with the voiceover at explaining what I did and why I did it. So I really hope you guys enjoyed that video. Leave a like if you did. Leave a comment if you want me to upload any specific tutorials on anything. And I'll see you all in the next one.